Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Those of you who haven't watched a video from me yet, my name's Laura, and I'm going to be teaching you about IB psychology. So today we're going to keep going with the sociocultural approach. Last time we looked at social identity theory, so we focused on the socio part, and today we're going to look at the cultural part. So specifically, we're going to take a look at cultural dimensions and see how they influence behavior. So I know a lot of the time people don't really like this topic because the culture side to this unit isn't quite as directly uh, accessible. It seems a bit more far out to some people, but actually we can break it down if we take a look at kind of where it came from, where these cultural dimensions originated, and then hopefully it should make a little more sense. So what we're looking at specifically is we're taking a look at how what we call cultural dimensions can influence how you work in a company, but also just generally how you exist in that culture or in, in any environment. So if we, we rewind a little bit to how these cultural dimensions came about, a guy called Hofstadter who was hired to basically determine what motivates employees um, specifically in IBM. So his role was he was meant to see across the world what could get this whole group or this whole company of employees to stay motivated, get their work done efficiently um, and accurately and so on. And he basically administered surveys to this whole team of employees. So in many different countries, it was actually 72 countries around the world. And he focused specifically on the cultural differences because when he gathered up all the surveys, he performed what's called an inductive content analysis. So basically kind of breaking down all the themes that he saw in these surveys, the, so the common themes, and then creating conclusions based on that. So kind of grouping the data that he gathered. And these big differences that he found from culture to culture was essentially different approaches in how different cultures approach work. So this is what he called cultural dimensions. So the cultural differences in work approach. And when he gathered all this data, so he did this by 2001, he looked across all the countries and found five major themes. So five major work related trends. And that's what we'll be discussing today. We'll just take a look at two of them specifically. So individualism versus collectivism and then time orientation. So short term versus long term. So we'll go into way more depth with those and take a look at a study for each. Um, but it's good to be aware that there's five. So beyond individualism, collectivism and time orientation, there's also power distance. So if we're talking about how culture affects work behaviors, Power distance is essentially how much power and status you're happy with being distributed within the company. So for example, if there's a high power distance that you're okay with, then you don't really mind that the boss is paid the most and that there's people at quite low levels of pay um, below him and him or her, and that also you don't mind the boss giving instructions, there being quite an obvious hierarchy. So it's not only money, it's also status, power, etc. Um, whereas low power, then you'd want total equality. So you'd want everyone to be pretty much on the same footing. And then there's uncertainty avoidance. So that's how content you are and comfortable you are with ambiguous and uncertain, unknown situations. So if there is a company with high uncertainty avoidance, then there's probably going to be more strict rules to follow. Whereas if it's quite low uncertainty avoidance, then it's quite laissez-faire, just kind of go with the flow essentially. So these are all different approaches to work culturally, remember. So we're looking specifically at work, that's what he was hired to do, but then we're gonna take it beyond that and look at general human behavior based off of these dimensions. And then the final one is masculinity versus femininity. You don't need to read into that as in it's just men versus females because that's not really the case. It's more so personal achievements versus interpersonal harmony. So it's just the kind of characteristic, stereotypical masculine versus feminine approaches here. So that's a different cultural variation that he found in work approaches. So as I said, we'll start by focusing on time orientation and individualism, collectivism. So we'll look at a study for each. So if we start by a study by Chen et al, so remember et al means and colleagues. So the aim of the study was to investigate time orientation. So what time orientation is talking about is that you can have two types of people. So you can be short-term oriented or long-term oriented. So if you're short-term oriented, 
what that means is you value immediate reward. You want to gain as much as you can as quickly as possible rather than delay that even if that could mean further gains beyond what you want instantly. Whereas long-term orientation, they're quite happy to delay instant gratification if that means that you can gain more in the long run. And we'll see that in the study, how that plays out. Um, so essentially, it's just how people experience time that is apparently quite relevant to culture. So it's whether you're focused on the future or the, the very present um, and valuing immediate success versus kind of trusting in the process, trusting in a delayed process. So what the study did is there was 147 what we call bicultural participants. So this was all based in Singapore. So those of you who don't know, in Singapore, there's quite a high proportion of Americans who live there, but who um, consider themselves bicultural. So they feel they identify as both American and Singaporean. So it's quite a big expat culture. There's a lot of merging of the two cultures. And that presents a really great opportunity for psychology to kind of take advantage of this situation that there's both a Western and an Eastern culture that are merged into one here. So what they did is they had these 147 participants who identify as bicultural. And what they did is they split them into two groups. So one group was shown pictures that were triggering Singaporean culture. And the other group was shown pictures triggering American culture. And what they then wanted to do is they then wanted to test the group's impatience by having each participant perform an online shopping task in order to order a book. And so what they were trying to see is how much they would value getting the book sooner rather than later and how money played into that. So basically the book could be delivered in four days for a standard fee. So I'm sure you're familiar with typical kind of shipping guidelines is that usually if you wait slightly longer, you don't have to pay. Whereas if you choose to get it the next day, you have to pay an extra fee. So it was four days for a standard fee or the next day for an additional charge. And so what they found was that the participants who were primed with the pictures showing US culture, so American culture, they were more likely to choose the next day delivery. So they were more likely to pay a fee for short-term gratification, so kind of instant um, gratification. And that suggested they were more impatient. Um, whereas those who were primed with Singaporean culture, they were more likely to delay gratification, but that meant that in the long run, they saved money. So it's more of a, this kind of difference shows that there's more of a trust in the process that if you're willing to be patient and wait, then you'll get a greater reward in the long run. So it was a really cool study basically showing how just by priming these cultures, they were able to get these significant results. Um, one thing to bear in mind, though, is that Singapore isn't necessarily indicative or representative of all Eastern cultures. Like I said, it is quite a mesh of Eastern and Western cultures, and you can't necessarily just pinpoint um, one Eastern culture and say this represents all of this. So make sure if you're talking about this as in, in an essay response, show your awareness of the fact that just because they found these results, this doesn't mean we can extend it to all Eastern cultures. It's just, again, just an, uh, an indication of how these findings um, could kind of be extrapolated big picture. So additionally, because of the design of the study, this is what we call an independent measures design, which means that each person only did one condition, essentially. So rather than each group trying, so let's say group one did the American condition first and then Singaporean, and then group two did Singaporean, then American, they didn't do that. They each just tried one condition, which means that technically they're not taking into account individual differences because there might just be differences between the group that then aren't kind of canceled out. So instead you'd use a repeated measures to see if you could eliminate that uncertainty. Um, but it's good that they were randomly divided into the groups because that means we weren't just assigning this is the Eastern culture, this is the Western culture. Instead, having that um, bicultural aspect shows that it was triggering the culture that is what led to the results. So that's a really good indication that these findings are because of the cultural setting, not because of some other innate aspect that might have been specific to a country or something like that. Um, then again, it isn't a huge sample size, considering that it is 
um, different cultures they're trying to look at, they are trying to make quite big conclusions based on quite a small sample. So that is one thing you could also comment on. But beyond that, it's still a great indication um, of this cultural dimension. So you can link that quite nicely back to the prompt. The second study we're going to take a look at is by Petrova et al. And the study set out to investigate individualism versus collectivism. So to see how people might prefer, have a kind of preference for putting themselves first or for putting the group first. And so this is also a cultural difference that Hofstadter found, which basically, again, can kind of be split up into Western and Eastern culture very loosely. So it's not definitive. What they did was that their, their participants were 3000 students at an American college and they chose half of the sample was of American origin. So they'd always been in the States. And then half of the sample was of Asian origin. So students studying there and they were from China, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and Vietnam. And what they then did is they conducted a field experiment where they sent out an email asking these participants to take part in a survey. And they were told that the survey would take about 20 minutes to do. It was completely voluntary. And the title of the survey was schools and social relationships. And it asked them about things to do with their education, what they thought of the school and so on. But also it asked them demographic questions. So things about, for example, their age, their country of origin, culture, so on, which is actually what the researchers were most interested in, because then they were able to ask about individualism versus collectivism. So where they kind of identified on that scale. And they then asked at the end of the survey if they'd be willing to participate in similar surveys in the future. Then the second half of the method is that then a month later, the participants were sent another email asking if they'd take part in a survey. And this one was going to take 40 minutes instead of the original 20 minutes. So what they found was that the Asian group was more likely to respond the first time around. And there were still a few Americans that responded, but it was more so swayed towards um, the Asian group that was, and it was theorized that that's because they're more of a collectivist culture. So the Eastern culture is more collectivist, which kind of places quite high priority on duties and obligations. So they might have felt a personal obligation to respond to this survey. So you can see in the table here that 10.2% of Asian students answered the first survey, whereas it was only 8% of US. So it wasn't a huge difference, but it was a statistically significant difference. So you can always say something statistically significant if you've done statistical tests on it to show that this difference isn't due to some other confounding variables. It's due to what you've actually investigated. So that's what that significance means. But then what they found is that when the second email was sent out asking participants to take part in the second survey, Americans were more likely to respond this time and fill out the survey. And nearly all of them replied. And so of the students who answered the first survey, 21.6% of the Americans completed the second survey, whereas 9.9% .9 of the Asian students did. So that's quite a significant difference as well. And that was also statistically significant. And what this suggests is that people have this desire to act consistently in an individualist culture. So perhaps if it's not about a group, um, activity and it's more about one individual, you might want to maintain your appearance. So kind of keep up appearances. If you've done this before, you might want to stick to that. So you're trying to stay consistent, trying to say, oh, I've already agreed to this. I'll keep going. So it's also kind of linked to compliance that if you've already said yes, you might as well kind of carry on the task because you've already to some extent agreed to it. Um, and then what this also showed is that they, when they factored out nationality, it, it wasn't the nationality that made the difference. So they also collected the demographic information on that. So it was definitely down to the individualism versus collectivism. They found that that was the key deciding factor. Um, what also could, this could also be interpreted as is that in a collectivist culture, which focuses more so on modesty, it might be inappropriate to discuss your own goals and talk about the, the school. So maybe that's why they were unwilling to take part the second time around, but there's many ways to interpret this. But all that it does suggest is that there probably is some role of culture, seeing as that's what they found to be the, the significant factor here on, um, on these results. And so it is just one interpretation, but it is 
quite an interesting interpretation and definitely suggests something about individualism versus collectivism. And also bear in mind the ecological validity is quite high here because it is a naturalistic setting. So it was a real request, it was real email sent out. This wasn't in some lab, this wasn't kind of an artificial setting. It was anything that a college student usually would receive, just an email asking them to take part in a survey. That's quite common. So that's basically the premise of the study. Um, and together, both these studies are part of a huge body of research supporting cultural dimensions. So it's been investigated in so many people worldwide, so many samples, lots of different studies. So they're quite well corroborated by research. But again, that's not to say that they're perfect. They are just a great indication of how culture does influence behavior. So if you're tying this essay all up at the end, trying to kind of link all of this together and link it back to cultural dimensions, just remember to link it to behavior as well. So don't just link it to how you approach work, kind of make it a bit broader and think, so these cultural dimensions, their role is that they affect behaviors and how we act based on the cultures we either grow up in or that we're currently living in, but that there's many factors to consider. And then you can kind of tie it all up by saying there's also social factors that interact. Culture on, it, uh, on its own isn't the one controlling factor, but clearly culture does play a big part altogether. altogether. Um, so I hope you guys learned something new today and that the cultural dimension subtopic is a little bit clearer. If you're interested in having more one-on-one um, -on -one tuition, then you can set up tutoring through Lanterna by clicking the link below. So that's either having a tutor like myself or someone else um, who can help you with psychology specifically, having one-on-one -on -one lessons and also other subjects if you're interested within the IB. Thanks so much guys for listening and I'll see you next time.